Hi there, welcome to Neppy in this. Now there are two reasons I'm doing these videos. The first reason is to share ideas. Now in my opinion, sharing ideas and as is, is an extremely powerful and mostly unappreciated concept that can improve how we invest. Not only how we invest, but it also can improve how we live our lives. The second reason I'm doing this is a little bit more of a selfish reason, and it's because I am finding as I prepare these videos, I learn quite a bit about the companies I'm focusing on. And they do say the best way to learn is to teach. So that's how I'm viewing these videos, that I learn more about these companies. I become more comfortable with the companies I'm covering. So let's get stuck into this video. This is three ASX stocks to watch part 11 and the three companies I will be focusing on this video are Max7, Spectre and PointsBet and uh, what I'll be doing with each of these three companies is having four slides and I'll be looking at a fact sheet and financials and focusing on a full year or trailing 12 months so that's going to be a 12 month period of financial data then I'll be looking at the operational cash flow and with the operational cash flow I'll be looking at the half year data for each of these three companies and then looking at the receipts history simply because I do like to look at the trend in cash receipts and I'll always like to see an upwards trend most Mostly be looking at the 4C with this one because I like to just break down uh, the receipts history into quarters and then finally I'll be looking at the one year daily chart in all three of the companies. Now the first company I'll be looking at is Max7 Technologies, ticket code M7T, one of my favourite ticket codes on the ASX. Now when you look at their market cap and then compare that to their financials, the trading 12 months. Uh, instantly, instantly you should know that the market must be expecting big things from this company in the future because if you valued this company based off their financial metrics, uh, this would be significantly overvalued because a market cap of 291 million and that's on revenue of 17 million and barely operational cash flow positive 300,000. If you do want further information on this company, they released their appendix 4C on the 21st of January and the half year report on the 18th of February. Now, off the top of my head, I could not tell you what this company does. I did a little bit of research on their website and still what they do is very fuzzy in my mind. So have a look at a little blurb I've just put there from their website. And if you do want further information, try to get some clarity about what they do, I highly recommend going to the website. So this is the cash flow from their half yearly report on February 18, and instantly there was two big red flags that popped up to me when I looked at this, and that's in regards to receipts from customers and the trend there from the previous year, and the fact that they went from being operational cash flow positive to negative in this half year. So the receipts from customers went backwards from 8.3 million to 8 million. So those are big two red flags. I like to see the opposite. I like to see uptrends. So this is another case, another sort of proof that the market is expecting big things from this company in the future. The other thing that did pop out is they did do an acquisition which cost 42.2 million and they funded that acquisition through a capital raising, $11.5 million capital raising and cash. They did have $48 million or $49 million of cash on hand and now they've got 14.4. So I'm not sure when they did that acquisition but looks like it hasn't uh, really helped with their bottom line. And the one thing I would be questioning about this company, I don't know a lot about them at the moment, is whether they're acquiring businesses to grow the company or they do have some organic growth because I do prefer a company to grow organically over growing uh, through acquisitions. Uh, that's just my own preference. Um, but um, at this point in time, I'm not sure about this acquisition and how it's helped them on the bottom line. Now, uh, the one thing I really like to see is look at the receipts history trend over time. So I've got data going back to July 2015 for Mac 7 Technologies, and you can see the uptrend is definitely there through that period. But you can see receipts 
is very lumpy and that's not a bad thing. I would prefer, this is um, again my own preference, uh, for the trend to be more smooth. I don't like this lumpiness. You can see back in January 2018 I had four million dollars in receipts and then the next quarter they only had 1.1 and you can see even July 2020 they went to up to 6.6 .6 million dollars and then their last two quarters actually were quite a bit lower than that. Now the compound quality growth rate since July 2015, uh, they've been growing their receipts at 20% per quarter. That's fairly good growth, but that growth uh, is based off the first quarter, which was very low. So it came off a very low base. So if I look back at the last 10 quarters, they've only been growing their receipts at 6.2%. And then if I look at the last five quarters, it's actually negative growth. But that's a little bit unfair on Max 7 because I did take, if you look at the past five quarters, uh, you go back five and five quarters ago, they did have receipts of 4.7 million, which was the second best quarter in their history. And ever since then, uh, only one quarter's beaten that. So I'm comparing, uh, it's a bit unfair comparing those two quarters. So there is a bit of a trend upwards, but I would like, um, if I was a shareholder, I would like to see a more significant uptrend in receipts moving forward because or just because of the valuation of the company is quite rich for the financial metrics we are seeing here. And when we look at the chart, one year daily chart of Max7, you can see how much the market is liking this company right now. Really nice developing uptrend from the lows of COVID-19 financial panic when the share price just got below 40 cents for a very brief period of time. And since then, the share price has run up quite a bit. And last time I looked, it was a dollar. 24. See, each time we've had a little bit of a dip. We had that bit of a dip in late October. Share price got down to about 90 cents or so. That would have been the ideal point to buy when it hit that trend line. And it's right now, right on that trend line. So right now could be a really uh, good time to buy Max7 if you like this company. The second company I'll be looking at is a largely unloved company by the market. You can tell that by the market only $7.1 million. And for full disclosure purposes, I am a shareholder of this company. I decided to go take a bit of a punt on this company simply because their market cap was really low. And I thought they could have been getting close to hitting an inflection point, And that was becoming operational cash flow positive. And if they could sustain that, this would be a very cheap company. So this is a developer of security, surveillance, and warning solutions. They also do shark monitoring solutions. I believe they've employed that in WA. And revenue and operational cash flow for the last uh, 12 months, only $4.2 million in revenue. That has been growing over the years. And operational cash flow negative of 700000 And they released their Appendix 4C and half year report on the 25th of each respective month. So this is the cash flow for the half yearly released on February 25. And a couple of negative things here, just like Max7 Technologies, their receipts and operational cash flow have gone negative or there is negative growth in both of those. So receipts have gone from 3 million down to 2.2 million and they have gone uh, operational cash flow negative from 352 to almost 600,000, even though they did get some COVID-19 tax incentives and uh, the R&D tax incentives were about flat for the year. Not a, lot, not a lot else happened during the half year. Uh, they always seem to do a small capital raisings and that was no different this last half year. $1.5 million in capital raising and they do have $2.2 million of cash on hand. No debt, so that means enterprise value is in the $5 million range, which is quite low. And this is their trend in receipts. We had a very good uptrend from July 2017 to July 2019. So that two-year period, they went from 270,000K to 1.5 million. Ever since then, it's been going sideways or down a bit. So I do think they were hit by COVID-19. You can see that in April 2020, went from 1.5 to 1.2. And you can see the compound quality growth rate since July 2017 is about 10.6%. But the last 10, last five quarters, uh, those numbers aren't very pretty. So over the last 10 quarters, they've only grown at 2.3%. In the last five quarters, negative 6%. So again, this is a case where management need to show that they are earning the money and start to grow those receipts. And I do think there is that possibility because I think this company was affected by COVID-19. And as the world gets back to normal, 
I do think the receipts in this company will start growing again at a good rate. And here is the one year daily chart for Spectre. Not a lot of happening with this chart and between March last year and November, the share price was going sideways, uh, but we can see that was at the end of a long-term downtrend. So just consolidating at that point in time. They released a sales and pipeline update uh, on the 24th of November last year, which was quite positively, um, was quite positive and the market received it very well. Share price rose 35 percent or something like that and you can see the big spike in volume as well so it looked like that could have been a trigger for a new uptrend or a developing uptrend but the share price has been drifting back for the last uh, well since the start of this year the share price did uh, test 10 cents at one point in December and right now it's at 6.7 cents probably if I was not a shareholder at this point in time there's probably no point buying in just because you can see the share price isn't in any sort of uptrend. And if they do release a good Appendix 4C in April, in a, like a month or so, uh, that could be the catalyst for a re-rating in the share price because I do think this company is undervalued, um, but you might want to wait for some confirmation that the company is undervalued at these prices. And the final company I'll be looking at is PointsBet. And you can see the big difference between the markup of Spectre and PointsBet. Spectre was at $7 million or so, and PointsBet, $2.7 billion. Uh, they are a corporate bookmaker, and they've been growing very strongly throughout the last few years. Uh, market cap, again, $2.7 billion, so they need to be growing quite strongly, or they need to have really good financial numbers. And at this point in time, revenue of $123 million, and that's growing strongly. And the only big uh, cross against uh, point spent is a operational cash flow negative, minus 56 million so i do believe they are following the philosophy that you have to spend money to make money uh, they released the half year report on the 25th of february and their appendix 4c on the 29th of january i do recommend having good read of those uh, reports now there are a lot of competitors in their space particularly in the united states they're popping up all over the place uh, as more and more states legalize uh, gambling so uh, that's something to keep in the back of your mind if you're interested in this company and this is points bet cash flow from the half year report released in February. And a few things really pop out when I look at this. Uh, so phenomenal growth in receipts, exactly what you want to see. Those receipts growing, growing from 29.8 million to 82.7 million, which is 177% growth. In contrast, and unfortunately, they have even more phenomenal growth in operational costs, growing at 182% from 53.9 million to 152 million. So I do believe that they are spending more and more money to get more and more market share, particularly in the United States, just because of the increasing competitors trying to gain that market share, gain that advantage. So they don't care at this point in time how much money they are spending simply because they want to grow and gain that market share. So they were operational cash flow negative for the half year to the tune of 49 million, but they do have a lot of cash on hand, 388 million at the end of the half. And one of the reasons they have that amount of cash on hand, they did a capital raising, which raised $341 million. So at this point in time, they have plenty of cash on hand to maybe fulfill their business plans in the future and growing the company, particularly in the United States. So when you look at the receipts history for points bet, this is exactly the sort of thing you want to see for a company to invest in or potentially to invest in. So they've grown their receipts at 35% per quarter. If you saw those sort of growth rates per year, you'd become excited, but this is per quarter. They've grown it from $7.4 million in July 2019 to $44.6 million in the most recent quarter. They were slightly affected by COVID-19. You can see the growth rate between January 2020 and April 2020, they went from 18 million to 18.7, but ever since April 2020, they have grown or doubled or more than doubled their receipts. So a really good growth rate for points bet, and this is exactly the sort of growth rate you want to see in a company to invest in. And finally, just to look at the one year daily chart for points bet, and this is the sort of chart you will see quite commonly on the ASX over the past year, a chart where the share price is going from the bottom left to the top right. And that's exactly what I want to see 
for a company you do own during the, that time period. So the share price has gone from almost a dollar and all the way up to $13.84. Nice developing uptrend. And right now, it could have been a good time to buy because the share price went down from went from $18 and to about $12, so about a 33% drop in the share price, simply because the rising bond yields has put some pressure on these sort of companies. Now, at this point in time, uh, if you were a shareholder, there's no reason to sell because the uptrend hasn't been broken. Um, but just keep an eye on it because you don't know what's going to happen with rising bond yields. And if we do see those built bond yields rise even further uh, over the next few months, that could put even more pressure on the points bet share price. But at this point in time, uh, no one really knows what's going to happen to those bond, long-term bond yields. So just keep an eye on it. Um, but I think uh, with this sort of company, uh, they are trying to grow their business. And if they are successful with growing their business and gaining even more market share in the United States, uh, the valuation of this company could be quite good at these current prices. And that's all for this video on these three companies to potentially put on your watch list. Now, the whole point of this video is to share some ideas. And if I'm sharing these ideas, uh, if the impetus is on you to do some further research. So hopefully I've given someone, at least one person out there, some inspiration to do more research on one of these companies. Otherwise, just leave a comment in the comment section. I'll eventually answer any comments. It might take me a while, and I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Have a good day. Bye.